that's actually interesting. So if I'm a company in Costa Rica and I'm yeah. doing 20 million a year and I actually am interested in growth capital or expansion capital for my company, um, I, the chances of you being able to raise local money is quite slim. Yeah. So what would be the process of, I'm interested in doing a public IPO, doing an IPO on the London name. Um, what would be the process? Can you kind of walk me through what that looks like for a company? Well, I think one of the things that is good about the UK process is there's a lot of flexibility to engage with investors at an early stage. So you can actually find out if something's going to work at a very early stage before you spend money and time on the process. So the concept of testing the waters, which you have in the US as it came through as part of the Jobs Act. We've had that for a long time, and you can engage, you can meet with key investors on numerous occasions, and you will before mm. you actually price an IPO. Um, and the investment banks are happy to, to, you know, kind of lead that process and make sure that you can get a read on whether things can work at an early stage. Now, mm. what I would say is that there are certain kind of companies that are going to work and some that aren't. So, if you were talking about Costa Rica, and that was just a a, a local shoe retailer is probably not very likely to be, be of much interest to the average investor in the UK. Now, a tech company based in Costa Rica, which also has sales in, say, Panama and Colombia, now that sounds mo much more interesting. Um, people are very interested in growth opportunities, basically, especially those which have multiple geographies where they have sales that they're, that they're into. They don't have to have any sales into the UK, by the way. I think it's important to understand. Hmm. There doesn't have to be anything UK about the company, but I think there has to be something international about the company. 